welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our League of Ireland season preview. Uh, the big week's upon us now. We've had the President's Cup. I'm joined by Rob and Ryan's came in. Second episode after his first episode of the Republic of Ireland All-Time 11 goalkeeper video, which you can check out if you've got a YouTube channel, so check it out. But uh, we'll start off with Bowes and, you know, the Inns they have are uh, Conor Levinson, James Talbot, Niall Corbett, Barker Affinity, um, Wade Slater, Allardyce, and Sam Brown. Then I'm from Dundalk. Um, Levinson's coming from Wolves. Corbett's coming from Wat Waterford. Uh, came up with a big reputation, I suppose, last season with Waterford. Or sorry, with, with UCD, and then obviously went to Waterford. Uh, your man Vigaru seemed to keep him out of the team. He done quite well for for Waterford for the majority of the season. I think helped him collect a lot of points early on. I think when he left, then they like, started to kind. Of, Conceded a lot of goals. Obviously, Talbot uh, had a spell at Sunderland, and then um, I think he cut his spell short towards the end of last season. And I think he's playing GAA for a while. Supple gone now, so they're obviously in need of a goalkeeper. What are your thoughts kind of on that? Um, like I was at the Bows game there on the Friday when they played Bray, and they look good. Do you know what I mean? Like they look like a team who can cause problems this season. I'm looking forward to the Rovers game, obviously. Um. But the players they brought in, to me, look quality. I think that both, you know, they could do well this season. Yeah. Yeah. I think as well, though, a lot of their hats all were ripped out. I mean, the players that went out were JJ Looney, Dan Casey, Ian Morris went to Shells as manager, Shane Supple. And then there was Bert, Dan Byrne, Oscar Brennan gone to Shells, and then Daniel Kelly gone to Dundalk. Didn't even play the other day in the President's Cup. But, uh, and then re signed, they had uh, Robbie McCourt. Magus and um, Ryan Swan, Devani and Buckley, Kevin Devani. Um, what what are your thoughts, Rob? You you've got to see them a lot last season. Yeah, um, yeah. I would, to be honest, I probably disagree. I think they'll struggle. And a friend of mine's a big Bowes fan, and it's a season ticket holder. But he always goes back. Well, look, I've been a Rovers in pre season, and they've blown teams out of the water. And then when the season starts, that's where it really matters, isn't it? Yeah. No, even like and I'll get onto Rovers, like, but like one example, so like, I went to watch Rovers two weeks ago against Cove. I think it wasn't Jack Byrne was like a hope he doesn't mind me saying if he watches it was shy, but then against Brentford on Friday night, I know it was only Brentford's B team, but he was by far the stand out. Stand out, but like the point I'm making is, you know, it's pre season, like you know, like you know, there's not a lot of pressure. It's when like competitive games start. Like I think, like there are a lot of young fellas as well, and if they haven't played a lot of first team football, like. I know a lot of people are critical of the league of Ireland, but say it's competitive football, the standard yeah. is decent. So, even as I said, friend, a friend of mine that supports Bowes, I think if they won't, I don't think they'll do well because they, they lost the spine of their team. If that happened to any team in the league, they'd be yeah, struggling. Yeah, a lot of new players coming in there to um, basically. It just depends on how quick they gel yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know? yeah, they've got to get the, the formula right, Bowes, because as you said, they've lost a lot of players. Can these new players come in? Can they gel? Can they adapt? And, you know make it a good side I reckon so but that's based off one game that I watched them you know what I mean where they played well against Bray who obviously are a division below but I think the Bows they could surprise a few this season okay, so. if you were to predict where they were going to finish how uh, they, how they... I'd probably say around 7 to 8 mm, me too yeah well same I think the same as well yeah uh, it's kind of hard to, to disagree only bit for the fact is that they have to gel, as we were saying. So yeah. th that's going to be the biggest factor. The players they yeah. brought in are good. I think Levinson will have a, a lot to prove. Yeah. Uh, coming from Wolves, I think he wants to get back back in and get involved. Or he's probably be looking to get himself back to the form that got him over England in the first place. Uh, yeah, I I can't really disagree. Otherwise, uh, we we'll move on to Cork. Yeah. And just you can tell us who they brought in. Grand will do. So Cork have brought in Dan Casey, uh, <laughs> Gary Comerford, Dyra O'Connor. Ty Ryan, John Tilly, Dara Rainsford, and Gary Boylan. Uh, now, Peter Cherry's gone, as has John Dunleavy, uh, Damien Delaney, Barry McNamani, back, Barry McNamee, and then Karen Sadler as well, obviously, at Doncaster. And then... That's uh, his first goal there, did he? Yeah, he did, actually. And then, also, they brought in Kevin O'Connor from Preston. And, in terms of players that re-signed, Shane Griffin, John Kavanagh, and then Keane Bergeri as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, from, from looking at them the other day, obviously, Kevin O'Connor was, was the big draw... For everyone that down Turner's cross, but I thought Darrell O'Connor was brilliant when he came on. He really 
Arden Hill came on when he, when, he, when he was on the pitch I thought he was brilliant especially the second half I thought he really gave it to Dundalk and they they, they struggled to handle him for, for for large spells he was the only one looking for Cork like a threat yeah. then they obviously brought on O'Connor he scored that free kick Um, I still think they're kind of lacking they, they seem to think that down there that, they, that lad Tilly they seem to think he's a very good player and he looks like he's going to be a player for them this season according to the, the boys down in Cork anyway that I was speaking at the weekend they all seem to think that this guy is, is good I think he came from England did he Brighton, Brighton yeah I mean yeah. he's come from Brighton he's, you know, he's got to be something you know yeah, yeah, so yeah. but I mean the thing about Cork is I saw him at the and Dan Casey was, is, is solid as well and, he, and yeah. himself and Sean yeah. McLaughlin there you know they've done well to keep McLaughlin I, yeah th- there's a rumour going around that you know O'Connor's there till the summer and then McLaughlin's going to go in the other direction and they're going to get O'Connor on free that's yeah. the rumour but he was playing centre mid because of the amount of fullbacks they have now and O'Connor was yeah I mean I saw Cork you know uh, the Irish Daily Mail Cup final there in the Viva in November they looked off the pace you can just say against one. Dundalk I could have said that yeah they looked off the pace against Dundalk you know Dundalk were the better side in the in the game and deserved to win it you know there there was a big gulf between Dundalk and Cork and if Cork want to be challenged in this season they're going to need to get back to the way they were you know Cork won the league two seasons ago they were a better side then than they are now they've got to they've got to rebuild you know they've lost players there uh, Cherry's gone obviously Damon Delaney left as well and he didn't really work out with Cork he's gone to Waterford now um, but he would have been a big presence you know coming from the Premiership with Palace you know I think Cork they probably won't win the league this year. Uh, people will come back to this video if I'm wrong now, but I don't think they will. Um, but I still think they can challenge. Mm, I don't. I maybe challenge for Europe, but I don't yeah, see. Yeah, don't see them yeah. challenging. It. You have to look at how the season finished last year, like when Rovers kind of got their act together at the back of bringing in Manus and then or, and Bazoo knew before that. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think the only team in the country that had better form than them was Dundalk. Like. Yeah, and they were keeping a lot of clean sheets. Yeah, as well. so like yeah, if they continue on that vein at the start of this season, like you know, I think it could be a two horse race between Rovers and Dundalk. Because I think Cork just if their budget's cut, they've lost a lot of good players, and yeah, it's just like kind of hard to see where they're going to go. Like you know, well, like I mean, like you know, they went last season, they went full time, and then like a couple of months later, they're announcing budget cuts, and so you yeah. wonder what's going on behind the scenes. Like you know, how. Only a few months ago, after winning the league and cup, they go full time. Then all of a sudden, they're like, ch- they probably still are full time, but cutting their budget and letting yeah. players go. And the players that they're bringing in were probably the I exception think, yeah, of I Dan Casey. Are, I think they still are full time. Like, with the exception of yeah. Dan Casey, the players that they brought in aren't probably better than the ones that they let go. Like, yeah, in my opinion, they are. Anyway, I have to agree like, with that, yeah. Yeah, but I still think Delaney is overall better because you know, he's played in the Premier League or whatever. Uh, Casey is a good defender, but. um. I think I think he fell out with Caulfield, and yeah. that's the reason why he kind of left. Yeah, as did Delaney as well, I think. That's what I mean. Yeah. Um. So, if you're predicting Cork f- finish, I'm I'm saying third or fourth. I probably would have said third for you. Yeah, because I think John Caulfield can still probably get the best out of them, and the best isn't gonna win the league, but I'd say probably third place. And to be fair, they look strong in the second half against uh, yeah. Dundalk and the Presidents Cup. So yeah. Yeah, I'd say third or fourth. Yeah, I mean maybe they'd like Dundalk probably take their foot off the pedal as well, knowing that the league starts the following Friday. And maybe they mm. just but they started with the same team that they started the cup final. Dundalk, so they, yeah, did they? yeah. So it was a strong, t- a strong enough team, and you know, Daniel Kelly didn't even come off the bench. Uh, Georgie Kelly came on for Hugo at, at in the second half as well. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm just I thought Cork for the second half. They I mean they once they got the goal, they really the momentum was with them. Yeah. And, they they look like they could cause teams trouble, especially Daryl O'Connor who's on the right wing. They're playing at home as well, and I think the crowd down there wants to get behind the players, like you know. Yeah, that I felt a bit of spit and other stuff on, on me when they when they were screaming and shouting oh, yeah. at uh, some of the Dundalk players. But <laughs> overall, it was a good experience down in Cork, and I hope to get down again to another game down the cross. Um, who's next up on this? Uh, it should be Derry, shouldn't it? Get on to them. In terms of the players they brought in, they brought in a good few actually. Kieran Cole, uh, Ali Gilchrist, uh, Peter Cherry, obviously, uh, Kieran Harkin. David Parkhouse, Patrick uh, McLean, Josh Kerr, and then Barry McNamee. And then they've gotten rid of the likes of uh, Gavin Pierce, Aaron McInef, Ben Fisk, Darren Cole, uh, Sam Todd, Ben Doherty, uh, Alistair Roy, and they've also re signed Jamie McDonough. 
Okay. We signed on Stokes as well. Oh, Stokes did, as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Stokes. See, we did get our uh, information in terms of transfers off yeah. extra time. The idea, so if there's something not updated, do apologise. Not not discouraging them either because we wouldn't have had all the info if it wasn't for them. To be fair, but uh, yeah, um, I think Ali Roy. I think he's a very good player. I'm surprised to hear that he's gone. Yeah, so, um, I think he's gone to the north, hasn't he? Or is he gone? I'm not sure where. Partick Thistle. Partick Thistle. Yeah, yeah. They maybe just, well, just wanted to move home, you know, as well. Yeah, oh, I thought he was a good player. He scored. He was playing with Sligo as well, wasn't yeah, he? No, yeah, well. I thought he was good as well. But you know, like you know, sometimes they just yeah wanted to go home. But I think they can't do any worse than they did last season. Anyway, I think they kind of just. Well, they got a lot of players back, like back to the, to the team. Like McLean always wanted to go back to Derry. Yeah. And didn't seem to get on with the manager before that. Mm. Um, McNamee returning back then as well from Cork. Mm. They didn't have the worst season. Didn't have a great season, but didn't have the worst season at Cork. Uh, I think Cork played him in opposition a good bit as well. Yeah. Like I think he's more of a central player. They kind of. He was like a right winger. Yeah, for them, kind yeah. of played him out wide, which I think he's a bit wasted. Like. Yeah, I mean. It's a hard one with there. You never know what you're gonna get with them. I, mean, it's, uh, I remember they went through patch last season where they were brutal. Then they became brilliant. Yeah. They had Curtis and the Feely brothers just banging in goals. Um, yeah, I think consistency is what they're looking for. But they're yeah. gone as well. Actually. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're gone. gone yeah. Crusaders, yeah. I think. Was it? Yeah, sorry, Feely brothers. I'll just cut that out. But uh, no, the, the, like they were banging in goals. Um, the three, the three of them were playing for the twenty ones. I think. Yeah. At Ireland. Yeah. Because they were doing so well. And then McInniff, then again, it was it was a couple of games in, they didn't seem to be doing great. Then they went on a brilliant run, and then I think Rover smashed them like five one or something, six one was it? I can't remember, but yeah, I remember they gave them a bit of a pet. But I think that was symptomatic of there. Like you know, they have a good game, then it could easily go out the following week and get tanked by a couple of goals. Yeah. I think. I think it was when they actually when they went into their new stadium or new new ground. Like. And then they went on this mad run. Like of good results and stuff. Yeah, they seem to think, settle in really well. Yeah, I think yeah. the defense. Though, like I think they have one of the worst defenses in the league, like even worse than I think. Concede goals, always conceded more than I think. Everyone bar Bray, maybe I think. Yeah. Yeah, like so. I think they were all over the shop. Like at yeah. one point, like I think there's probably stuff going on behind the scenes because I always see there was a bit of tension with Kenny Man, Shea. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like him at all. He really wrecked my head. Uh, listen to him talking on. Is there anyone on that list that kind of stands out for you as a transfer in that uh, makes you kind of go wow? I Brian, mean, Barry McInerney. Yeah, yeah he's probably, made club captain as well. Yeah, Alan yeah. Stokes probably a good sign. Yeah, so you have to see Patrick McLean back as well. And you're not saying that because he's Well, that's true. Yeah, look, James. But even Peter Cherry coming in like that's it's a statement, you know. And I think Derry now, if they can find consistency, they could do well this season. Yeah, mm, I don't see I don't see them doing any better than. If they manage to get fifth, I don't see. Them. I think yeah, mid table was probably is. Like that wouldn't yeah. be bad. Like if they just get a bit more of a feel goal thing around the club, like yeah. Declan Devine there, gone because the last time he was there, there, he won the cup with them if I'm not wrong. So, but like it'd be a bit worse. Like having watched them last season for overs, like not the bit of Ali Gilchrist signing for them. I can't see why they signed him based off what he did at Rovers. He was yeah, fairly. I never thought he was fairly amazing. poor to be polite. Like I don't. It's like you never in sport I think he only if he played ten or more games for Rovers and then for the second half of the season he was wasn't even getting in the squad like unless they were injured, like, you know, and Yeah. Like, yeah, so like I think they'll improve on the last season, but it's just how much will they improve? Yeah. And, if you were to pick a place at mid table, like you know, fifth, sixth or something. Mm, like. That's what I was thinking, was Yeah, it? probably say sixth place to be honest. We're just gonna keep looking. Yeah. We are, we are. I think I think there'll be one who would just like, no, you know what, they're gonna they're gonna come second, they're gonna win. Yeah. Uh but then moving on to the team um that are now President's Cup champions. Dundalk, uh you know, obviously the big I think thing that they lost was their manager going to eventually succeed Mick McCarthy as manager but for the time being he's the under 21 manager um, they've got in Aaron McCary uh, Dan O'Kelly Jordan Flores and Sean Murray um, but uh, they've got rid of uh, Murray Sava Poynton uh, Carlton Ubek Sinu I can't really say that name properly but uh, you know who I'm talking about um, then obviously Dylan Connolly going to Wimbledon Stephen O'Donnell retiring and Sam Byrne he went to Bowes. So, uh, and then re-signed uh, Dane Massey, um, Robbie Benson, Tracy, and uh, Lido Latefa. Yeah. So, I mean, 
they've kept <laughs> the core of their of their squad as was seen with the uh, the final team that played against um, Cork in the Presidents Cup. But for me, I mean they've they've just added like I think you were saying before that you know you think Kelly's an upgrade on Connolly. Connolly yeah. Like yeah. People are saying that this Sean Murray lad. I don't know a lot about him, but people oh, are raving. He's cold. Yeah, a lot of people are going. I think I think he's probably O'Donnell's replacement. Uh, maybe I don't know. I think from what. Well, because I I mean that I know O'Donnell was, was was carrying on a bit, but I mean yeah. he was class I for over the years. Yeah, I, I think that because I I I know that they still wanted to play on, but he had to go into injuries. Got yeah, good guy. Yeah, everything was a smashing player. I don't, I don't know. Like well, when Murray was at Walford, he was kind of more of a, an attacking mid, like kind of yeah. more, like something similar to Patrick McElhenney, but. Yeah, maybe they might shift him back into midfield in the O'Donnell role and getting him on the ball and dictating play, like spraying the ball a bit. Yeah. But yeah, well, he is a good player. Like, sure, he played a lot for the, in the championship when he's only a young lad, and I think it's just the injuries got the better of him from probably kicking on. Because I think at one point he was linked with, like, clubs in the Premiership because he was really highly rated. But, yeah, he said injury, so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. Yeah, and you're a bit of a fan of uh, McCary as well, aren't you? Aaron McCrary, yeah, it's just like, you know, it's another one, like, only, like, just, what, a year or two ago, and Declan Rice's first game for, he was in the Ireland squad training with them for the Turkey friendly, like, you know, just being, he played, he's played for Wolves, he's played in the SPL, and it's just be interesting to see how he gets on, like, you know, like, he's been highly rated anywhere he's been, and then maybe just a few issues off the pitch might cost him, so, if he gets in ahead of Gary Rogers, like, it'd be interesting to see, like, how he kicks on, like. Yeah, uh, do you think they'll miss any of the outs? Uh, Murray, Sava, Poynton, Connolly even? I wouldn't say so, I think. As I said, do you think the players that they brought in have been better than the players that they let go? Yeah, like, I think Kelly is anyway. I think he scores goals. He's qu- like he's as probably not as quick, but he still is, like, yeah. offers the same kind of threat as Dylan Connolly, but probably a bit more finesse about him. Yeah, so on that respect, a bit more quality. Yeah, and then Sean Murray, well, we don't know, but he's going to be like, is he as good as Stephen O'Donnell or better? So that's yeah, yeah. it's kind of a similar thing to to what's Jack Brown going to be like once the season starts. Yeah, it's the same yeah. thing. You don't really know. Like. Yeah, uh, how are you feeling about Dundalk? See, they didn't bring in like a mass amount of players. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, but I think the thing is they kept a lot. But they of don't need to. Like I think they are strong enough by themselves. Like they didn't need to. Reshape. <laughs> Oftentimes, when a team would like win the 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 Premier Division, you'd see their players going off to England or somewhere else in Ireland and all that kind of thing. Like they have managed to retain a lot of players, as you said, they managed to retain their core, and they have strengthened it as well by bringing in and uh, the players that they have. So I think that yeah, I see Dundalk doing well, of course, because um they probably are on paper the strongest team in the league. Yeah, well, I think last season shows league winners when they were comfortable league winners after the. The season break, I think that's when they really just kind of kicked on. They've, they went out of Europe and just show that they were a level above anything else. And I don't think they'll win it as comfortable this year. I do think Rovers will be a, a, a close. If Rovers can can find the net a lot more, um, I think Rovers will hold them close. But yeah. if I was to pick a team to win the league, I'd probably have to say Dundalk for me would finish first again this year, um, and probably could go on to do the double. In my opinion. Yeah, I I'd have to agree with that to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, like it's it's a toss up between them and Rovers, I think. I think Rovers the two like big signs, Jack Byrne and McIniff, I think well midfield wise I think there's nearly as strong as them dog. It's probably just they might even be a little bit strong because you got Watson there as well. Yeah, like yeah. if Dylan Watts, Finn, Greg Bulger and then I think it's just up front will probably ultimately cost Rovers. Yeah, so like he'll been picked up from where he finished last season, you know. Yeah, so I'd say Dundalk will win the league, but I don't think they'll have it as easy. Like, I think mm. Rovers will push them along. And even last season, I think Rovers got result against one Oriel as well. So yeah. they did but, close the gap even last season. So hopefully just Well, keep... one thing I will say is that, you know, Georgie Kelly came in from UCD uh, in that mid-season break and didn't really get a look in because Huben was so good. And I think that if, if Huben does get injured, I think from what I've seen from the other night, he looks like a very good player. And obviously, banging goals for UCD ultimately kind of helped him get up, get up in the end before he left. Um, I know um, Davis, wasn't it? Connor Davis. Yeah, brought him from Red. Yeah, so that he came in and kind of helped steady the ship and get them up there. Eventually, with Georgie Kelly's goals, was the, was the reason why they were up there in the first place. And, you know, if he, if he can 
if they have him and Huben scoring goals as well as you know you do always have your likes your McElhenney's chipping in with goals Michael Duffy was brilliant the other day again against Cork McKellie uh, will score goals as well yeah so they, they do the difference being with Dundalk and Rovers is Dundalk will have a lot more players that will score from anyone look at Massey Dan Massey scored from a uh, corner I think it was um, it's a header uh, versus Cork so I mean they do score goals from all over and then you got to remember that they they didn't even play like Daniel Cleary and a couple of other players who's as 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 my opinion as good as any centre half in the league. I think Dan Cleary's class and he didn't even get a look in because Hor and um, Gartland were, were were there at, at the back, you know. So um, I think it's going to be tough for Rovers to try and break that, but uh, that's just that's the dog for me. First place and you guys. <laughs> um, if the manager can come in, get the players motivated. He has the squad. Um, yeah, I can see him winning it. But again, Rovers will give him a good chance. I think this season. Yeah, same. Unfortunately. Uh, then I think it's on to Finn Harps. Yeah. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't know a whole lot about this, but uh, their ends are Sam Todd, Daniel O'Reilly, Quaylon McAleer, uh, Raf Kotaro from Sligo, Harry Ashcroft, Tony McNamee, and then they resign Nathan Boyle, Gareth Harkin, Mark Coyle, Kieran Gallagher, Mike Place. Noel Logue, Peter Burke, and Keith Cowan. And then out is Dahl and Aiden for Adrian Freel. So for me, the only person that I really know on that list without lying to anyone is Rafael Cotaro, who is ultimately probably going to play his last season in the league. In yeah, yeah, the only one I'd know, like off the top of my head, out of the new signs would be Tony McNamee, because Barry McNamee's brother. Like. Yeah. So he's not a bad player. Like He's tidy enough, like, but... Yeah, I think for them, like, because they're part time, like, I think it, their aim will just be to kind of try and stay up. I think their aim will be finish ahead of UCD, and whether like I think between the two of them, like, that'll be their ambitions. Yeah. Just be honest, like. Just to try and like stay yeah. above water, basically. Yeah, like so, whichever one if they so either then they'll be aiming for ninth in the playoffs, I'd say. Yeah. In the best case scenario for me, like you know, every other club pretty much is probably full time and. Has a bit more money to it, like you know. Maybe Bowes and maybe just think Bowes are in a better position for just signing players as well. Like, ah, yeah, they would be. Just because they're based in Dublin, Dublin, yeah, you know, like whereas Finn Harps is, like, only got all out of the way. Like it's hard, and but like you know, even in, it's hard, probably hard to convince players to move up there. Never mind if they're only getting probably petrol money, you know. So yeah, it's safe to finish and say nine to be their ambition. I'd say. Yeah. yeah, that's all you can say. So again, like, yeah, I don't really know we, much about it. We won't really be able to comment too much on it until we start seeing them play with the league kind of progresses. But yeah. uh, how do you feel, Ryan? Um, like as I said, the players you've mentioned there, Quitaro's the only one that rings a bell. I, I have to be honest, I don't really know a lot about the players they brought in. I don't really know a lot about Finn Harps full stop. To be honest, I know that they're a difficult side to travel away to. You know, it's a long stretch to go up to Donegal and try and get a result from. But um, yeah, I. I can't see them doing well, but who am I to judge? You know, they might surprise a few again, but I'd say that um, probably around ninth is realistic. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of find it hard to disagree on that there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I just I see them struggling. In my, in my opinion, I'd probably get stick off in Habs fans in the comments, but until I see them play a little bit, I can't judge. They're probably sitting there slagging me with the shower going top on you, Sean. Uh, I mean, yeah. I can't really say much. We're in a better position than we are. Yeah, well, we'll see next season, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Well, stay tuned for that uh, Division One preview next week. But uh, who's up next then? Sligo, is it? Uh, yes, that's myself. So uh, Sligo, they've done a good bit of business as well. Uh, Ronan Murray's come in as well as John Russell, uh, Dante uh, Leversock, John Dunleavy, uh, Romeo Parks, and then Brendan Ogbu as well. They've gotten rid of the likes of Seamus uh, Sharkey, uh, Caelan McAleer, Mikey Drennan, uh, Rafael Cotero, as you said. Adam Wixit, Lee Lynch, uh, Patrick McLean, uh, Reese Gorman, uh, Daverin is gone as well, and then Gary Boylan. They've re signed the likes Did of Reese. Reese McCabe goes well, didn't he? No, that uh, was Reese McCabe. Reese Gorman was at Brighton. Uh, it was Reese Gorman, went to St. Pat's. Yeah, but Reese McCabe went to Pat's. Yeah, no, Reese Gorman was at Bray last season. I think I was at extra time. I think it's just a typo in their part. Oh, yeah, I was, yeah, it probably is actually. So I'm confused. What, what? So it's uh, Reese McCabe left. Reese McCabe's gone to Pat's. That's what it is, yeah. Yeah. And Reese Gorman then is probably still at the club, I presume. Right, so you just yeah. say you just say Reese McKay. Yeah, but anyways, in terms of the re-signed players, though, they've brought in, uh, they've re-signed Regan Donnellan, uh, uh, Kyle Callum McFadden, uh, Mitchell Beanie, Ed McGinty, Patrick McLean, obviously, 
John Maher, Jack uh, uh, Leaney, uh, or is it Jack Kearney? I can't even read my writing now. David Cawley, uh, Chris Tardis, uh, Liam Kerrigan, Niall, Ma- uh, Niall Mahoran, and then Luke McNicholas as well. So, I mean, like, they've done a lot of business, in fairness. Yeah, and they got a new gaffer in uh, yeah. Buckley. Yeah, Leo Buckley, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, thought, I thought they got a bit of a bit of a roasting off the Pats fans towards the end of last season. Okay, I, I understand the last two seasons were probably weren't by their standards where they thought they should be. Mm. Uh, but I think, you know, I thought there was a lot of games I was at last season with Pats and I thought they played really good football. And I, and I was just like, all they were really missing was a goal score. You know what I mean? It, they they play nice football, you know. They don't. They've nice footballers that that play for the team. They're good players, and ultimately he, he does get good players in. You know, I think Murray will have a good season for us. Like I think if he starts off well with a couple of goals, I think he'll finish on double figures, and that could be vital to kind of where they end up. And um, but he's the only one that kind of stands out for me there in, in that kind of. Yeah. I think Johnny don't leave. He's a good sign, and I know he's yeah. been injured a lot, but like if he stays fit, like he's. Yeah, good player. Like, but it's whether he will stay fit or not is it is, yeah. is is the is the only thing. The guy that they re-signed, man, John Mann, he's only a young lad. I think he was massive when he got in for them last season. He was like massively impressive. I think he was linked with moves away, but they managed to get him on a new contract. Like so. Yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah, Mary could be good for him. And as you said, he might score a good few goals this season. But you wouldn't want them to come over reliant on a striker because if he's suspended, if he's injured, whatever. They might struggle. Generally. Yeah, I'm just saying if, if there's one player off the list that's going to stand out, I think it's just going to be him. Yeah, I but, thought he was as again like every pretty much striker had done that last season was trying to get in ahead of Hoover and he was just different yeah, level. Yeah, he is, no, he is yeah. different level. He's uh, he's best striker in the league. You know, his goal tally from last season doesn't lie. He's, yeah, he's I'm surprised he wasn't transferred. To be honest, I, I'm surprised he didn't get a move. Yeah, well. Maybe he just doesn't want it after the hassle he had in England the first time. Maybe, maybe, but uh, back to Sligo anyways, to say. Something every yeah, back to Sligo, but it, like yeah, as I say, there's nothing really there that makes me kind of go wow. I think they'll do okay. I don't think they'll uh, they'll do any better than mid table at the minute. Yeah, uh, they might surprise us. They might go in and do well. So yeah, we knows. don't want to jump to conclusions too early, but I'd probably put Sligo right now at around probably eighth position. Mm. Um, sort of lower in the table because it's just yeah. It's how the Dan Bowles and Derry will all be kind of closer together. Yeah, fighting it out to see who can kind of finish ahead of uh, um UCD and Finnair and all the rest. Later, yeah. we're kept the rest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, it is what it is. But uh, I suppose it's time to move on to the hoops. That's it. Orange number one. Um, so they've probably had a more active. They've had, a, I suppose, active enough transfer window, I suppose, and the only two major signs, two, well, like, two signs they brought, are both, the two signs they have brought in are both, like, probably would start for nearly any other team in the league, and Jack Byrne and Aaron McAniff, and then players that are gone is Luke Byrne, obviously, gone to Paul's club and shells, Gary Shaw. Played like, well, defence centre half, did or not? Well, yeah, yeah, I think he's a good player, I just think he's one of the people. Yeah, he's he's injuries, injuries, he looks a very good player. Dave McAllister, where he's on the underage coaching team, now, Ali Gilchrist, Meal has gone to Pats, Aaron Bulger gone along to Cardiff. That was, what, what are your thoughts on that? That's a weird one. I just think Rowers had a lot of like overloaded in midfield players, and to be honest, I'd say it's more so like he'll go along the card and see how he does with their under twenty trees and if he does well, like they'll probably sign him, like, you know, get a fee out of it. Yeah. I'd say that's what the thinking is. But sure, look, win win situation. If he if he doesn't get signed with card, he'll come back. I think he's a smashing player and he's yeah. still only eighteen. Then he's only finished on his leave until last summer. Yeah, that's what I mean. So it's plenty of time on the side and then other players are Follower gone. Of the show, so. Yeah. Kevin Horgan, he signed for Galway the other day, and Dean Williams, he's gone out on loan to alone and Aaron Dobbs left. Then they re-signed, it's probably more important, Greg Bulger, Dan Carr, Joey O'Brien, Joel Kustran, Dean Dillon, Sean Boyd, Sam Cavanagh, and Sam Cavanagh, sorry, Sam Bone, and then my namesakes, Sean Cavanagh and Brandon Cavanagh. So yeah, so I think um, it's more like trying to do what than dock, you know, like keep the squad together and just build on it. So yeah, I think, um, but they have two fellas on trial as well, sorry, um, Stryker or Anne Vojic. I think he signed. See, well, then, like, it, that's good. And then a goalkeeper, Leon Pauls, obviously, because Gavin Bazoon, who left there last week yeah. to Man City, so yeah. Earlier than schedule, or ahead of schedule. Ahead of schedule, yeah. So, um, so I'm fairly confident after I said I went to watch him against Brentford, you know, I know it's only 
Brent for being, I know you can't really take a lot from pre season, but I have to admit that like Jack Brown was just I heard he had a great game. He, he started out different. left, did he? But the system they were playing was kind of like Greg Bull no, sorry, it wasn't Greg Bull that didn't start midfield. It was He was at Turner's Cross. Sorry. Was he? I think the start midfield was Dylan Watts, Sam Bowen, um Jack Byrne and then Finn and Kustran and then the Car? No, Car didn't start up front of Oh god. Was no, it wasn't I forget who started up front now, Jesus, that's awful after only being at the match. But um It'll come back to you. It'll come back to me, yeah, hopefully. But no, yeah, I said Jack Byrne is just different level to anyone around. Like, I know, I'm not just saying that because I'm a rover, Sam, but his touch, his control, his pass and vision, like his ability like just to take the ball under pressure and even beating a player is just... If he brings that into the season, like I'll think they're just going to... He'll, like, if he can bring that, he'll be by far one of the You'd best like players, if quick. not the best player in the league. Like, Similar I think to Graham Burke in a lot of respects. Like, I think, in my opinion, probably even better than Graham Burke. I like, think he's better. You know, I just think, you know, it's really like seven clubs and he's only 22. and know a few of them are low moves. So I was just reading an interview with him today like, and he just seems to have his head screwed on and that he just wants to focus on his football, which is good. And I think if I was Rowers anyway, like it, I think it would build your midfield around him. Yeah. It's just and a, obviously, obviously McInniff's like, class. Ah, he came on as well. And it's actually, Rowe, like the matches I've seen, the couple of pre-season matches, they seem to be playing different to when he was at Derry, where he's kind of more in the number 10. Now, Rowe seemed to have more kind of sitting in the field, getting out, getting on the ball and picking out passes. And he seems as good at that as he does in like in a more attacking role. So, so I think Rowe's midfield, like I think they're not going to get an out now goal score, like, you know, obviously, like that they need to kind of probably really, really challenge them off. But I think what they're banking on is goals from midfield. So you have Finn will chip in with goals, McInniff will score goals, but Jack Brown is pinging the ball, pinging it from about 20 yards out and a few unbelievable saves from the keeper. If that was a League of Ireland match, there was no way the keeper was getting to them, yeah. I'd say. So I'd say, yeah, for midfield, midfield boys, they're unbelievably strong defensively then. You know, I think Sean Kavanagh, in my opinion, like he, they had a really good season last year when it's first year at left back and I think if he kicks on this year in my opinion he'll be the best left back in the league then you have to add into the mix that Trevor Clark is back as well after being out injured for pretty much all last season so you can play him left full or left yeah, wing he's class as well. he's perfect in the 21s the other day too. yeah he's, uh, he's a smashing player and he be, looks like he's bulked up a bit as well like and he's still quick you know so, so I think he'll have, he'll have a you know, yeah, I think it's going to be a big season for him if he can step up and he can make his kind of way into that midfield. And then you talk about Dylan Watts and stuff like that. Yeah. But I think, personally, I think they're going to finish second. And I think they might, they could well um, do well in the cup. I think they they should be looking to try and win that cup and finish as high as possible as they as they possibly could, in my opinion. Yeah, um, I think second place on a minimum anyway. And yeah, but I just think it's the goals the situation. You look at Hume yeah. and... You know, you see how many goals it took him to score last year for Dundalk to win it. I just don't think Rovers have the ammunition up top. They might still... Sorry, it's Aaron Green that started up front against Brantford. My apologies. In case he's Green, watching. Man. Yeah. Uh, but, it, like, that's, that's, I think that's just the, the difference in levels. I mean, you could argue that Burns probably better than the majority of Dundalk's midfielders. So, you can kind of spin it on that way. But, again, it's going to matter. It's going to matter how the season progresses. I could look like a tosser. At the end of the season, and Rovers could comfortably win the league. That's that's yeah, just yeah, this is just, just the potential preview, you know? yeah. yeah, it's just hard to like you know. Was you know the Sunday World had Rovers. They predicted that they'd win the league, and but like being like this is the week before it kicks off, so all the papers will be doing their previews. So it'll be interesting to see who picks who and what your runners pick who. But yeah, as I said, like it's probably. I'm just glad they finally got the goalkeeping situation sorted. I know that was last year, but I think they have that to build on, and then. Madison and then the back four of Kavanagh, Lee Grace, Lopez, or I think Joey O'Brien is as like is a good show in there and Eaton Boyles, you know, solid platform to build off and then midfield boys like doing embarrassment of riches and then up front's probably ultimately where we unless this fella now they're bringing in or Aaron Green like you know hits a bit of form like because I think Dan Carr he played at the end of last season they had him playing out wide left and cutting in and. He looked very good out there, like, and he actually scored a good few goals. So I just think it'd be, so it'd just be interesting to see. Our first couple of games, I think they're Waterford, Derry, Bowes, and then Dundalk. 
So Rovers and Dundalk are playing each other fairly soon. So yeah, see how it goes. Prediction finish. Prediction. I'd say second. Yeah. I mean, for me, Rovers have probably the best midfield in the league, and I might cause a debate there in the comments. I don't know, but I'd, I'd say they probably do. But without a striker that maybe can score as much as Huben did, I'd say they'd probably have to finish about second, which is still very good. Second place for me. I guess I disagree. A team that I think is going to push them hard is St. Pat's, and they've brought in uh, Kieran Kelly from Drada, Georgie Poynton, uh, Keen Coleman, <coughs> Brandon Mele, uh, Mikey Drennan, Gary Shaw, Reese McCabe, David Webster, Chris Forrester, and then they've obviously let Conan Byrne go, Michael Barker, Ryan Brennan, Thomas Byrne, who seems to be a bit of a cult hero last season, Ian Turner, and then they've re-signed Lee Desmond, Simon Madden, Dara Markey, Brendan Clark, Jamie Lennon, Barry Murphy, and Brian Maher. Um, I think they've they've really added to their firepower, you know, and and ultimately, as I said earlier, uh, we mentioned it that the only thing that was kind of stopping them winning games last year because they were playing teams off the park and then they were just getting beaten by the other teams scoring goals, it was the fact that they weren't scoring enough. Now I think that they have the ammunition there that if they can start the season off well, they're playing Cork this Friday. In Richmond, if they get a win there, that would be massive for them, I think. Yeah, it'd be a great start, wouldn't it? Perfect start, in fact. That's exactly what they'd want. So. Yeah, from a Rovers perspective, <clears throat> obviously they've gotten a lot of former players, to include David Webster mm. and that too, um, even though he came from Waterford. But what do you, what can what can Pats fans expect from Mele and Shaw and Webster? Is that, yeah, yeah. Drennan, didn't he play for... Yeah, yeah. he played for Rovers before he took... His, took a step away from the game it's great to see him back playing at the level he's at because you know he did have a tough time with it so that's good to see like that he's managed to get himself back together so um but yeah i think with shaw's what you see what is gay he works hard and he's like you know target target well, he's a target man he's a big fella like he'll score goals and then you know it just depends what way they play because i think you can't really play drennan with shaw because i think they're stylistically they're two different types of players so we can either one or the other like unless yeah. you want to play Drennan playing off Shaw but then in that case then that's the position you imagine Chris Forrester is going to play you it, well, like with Jack Byrne and Sean Murray are probably the three most outstanding signings this, like, I was really surprised to see him come back like and you know I think there was issues behind the scenes like family wise which you never like to hear like so hopefully yeah. like yeah, just yeah. Hopefully he does well. You just want to see good players playing good football. But in terms of Meal, I think Meal is a good player. It's just I think he needs now with some players you can bring them in and they like they can have a good game, but then they can drop back out with him. I think with him he needs to game, play consistent games. He gets confidence. Yeah, games he gets when he does when he's on form. though, he's a super player. Like yeah. You know? So I think yeah, they've the makings of a very good team. And then Moyle, pal from Sligo, Reese McKay, I think is a super yeah. player. So I think they'll really be... You have posters of him in your room, I think. Yeah, getting a tattoo next week, you know. <laughs> so. But um, yeah, I think they'll do well this season. I think Webster's a good sign and at the back. and Solid, it, yeah. I think last season with Buckley there, I think sometimes they kind of maybe just lacked a bit of um, street smarts. I think they had a bit of experience. Well, the they page. still have Kevin Toner there as well. Uh, well, I mean, like someone that's been around the block. In the oh, league. yeah, yeah, no, but I think beside him... Oh, yeah, yeah. I think the two of them could be very good. Then, I think Lee Desmond. Lee Desmond, it depends where, because like, he's played defence and and he's looked at his goal in midfield mm. so and they solid a, a left back with Bermo and then right back with Simon Madden yeah so I think they, they do well Harry Kenny did a good job at Bray before they well put yeah. so his yeah, problems exactly. there like so yeah. so yeah I think they'll be third I'd say third if third third yeah I was thinking really third good because I think I think they'll be better than Cork anyway and be interested because that is the first yeah. match like yeah. See how they get on. I think they'll be pushing it'd be Waterford pushing them for the third and fourth yeah. places, I yeah. think. Um but yeah, uh, they were on to what now was it U C D? They've only promoted a young lad from the under nineteens, which I sort of couldn't find his name on extra time. And then out was Darrow O'Connor to Cork mm. and Greg Slogger to Derry. And then apparently one of their Dundalk are linked with one of their players, Liam Scales, which they rejected the bid or something. Yeah, so but I think the plan would be Dundalk would sign him and loan him back to them. Oh yeah, that was it. But they rejected the. Yeah, well, I the think plan. I think he's on under scholarship, so whatever conditions of the scholarships are in UCD. So talk about the DKIT. But uh, like I said I think as we said already, I think we Demon Finn Harps down the bottom of the table, like you know scrapping it out to see who can 
finishing that yeah, play I, I, haven't, I haven't really got much to say about UCD but they play good football to be fair like you know yeah. when I watch them against Dundalk and the they don't so well to get up though they, yeah they did I mean I I would have been going to a few first division games I uh, would have gone to Stradbrook see Kevin Daly play them and UCD they deserved to win the league last year you know themselves and and, um, and you know like Finn Harps. yeah Finn Harps. and you look at UCD do they have enough to stay in the Premier Division I'd have to say no um, I don't think they're strong enough, uh, but at the same time, you know, as well, you had a great cup run last season. Obviously, um, it's not impossible for them to stay up, but it's gonna be tough. Yeah, I, I look at it between them or Finn Harps. I think they're gonna struggle to. Um, I think every other team have have a stronger squad. Yeah, I think it's but like one thing I'll say for you, so if you do get a chance and you're in the South Dublin area, go and watch them because they do play play good football. Like you know, that's one thing you're guaranteed. Like they'll. You ain't seen that in the semi final against Dundalk. Like other teams would go up there and were always are guilty of it and kind of trying to play defensive or ne- negative football or like. But like UCD tried to try and play the same way no matter who they're playing. So yeah. they'll be worth watching anyway. They're a good side. Like they do have some good players. Like so, but I said the main Achilles heel for them is like just this. Like they did bring players in from the outside in the past, but I think now they're just content to have the scholar lads that are in the college on scholarships. But one player that like just off the top of my head because I do see him knocking about UCD because it worked there is Christy Fagan so I don't know if he's still with Pats or not or would there be any scope for UCD to bring him in because if he's a student there I'm sure they could work out some sort of arrangement maybe well, any UCD fans that's on the thoughts in the comments would you like to have him there uh, Waterford oh, yeah because I think we're all in agreement that it's, it's going to be 9th 10th yeah probably around that uh, Waterford uh, could be higher on the table they brought in a few. JJ Lunny's come in. Zach L. Buzetti, uh, Shane Duggan, Kevin Lynch, and then Damien Delaney, obviously from Cork. They've got rid of the likes of Gary Comerford, uh, Niall Corbett, Derek Daly, Paul Keegan's gone to Bray, David Webster, and then Sean Roach. And then they re signed Corey Galvin, Rory Feely, John Martin, Dean Walsh, Matthew Connor, Dean O'Halloran, and then Kenny Brown as well. And they also signed your man off Dundalk the other day, Chev Dukas. Yeah, Brian as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. I mean, and if there's any players that aren't on the list, let us know in the comments yeah. in case we missed anybody. Uh, it wasn't anything intentional. Uh, yeah, look, I, I think they've strengthened from last year. I think they may, I, I suppose you could say they kind of lost a little bit with Webster, but bringing in Delaney is just as equally as good, I think. Um, if not, maybe a little bit better. But uh, JJ Looney, fantastic player. Yeah, fantastic great season team. of balls. Yeah. yeah. Um, then obviously they got Maxim Quogan as well off uh, Warren Point. He played against Shells, the run was very good. So, yeah, I mean, they 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 obviously have Akinadi and, and yeah. that up top as well, your mate. Um, but like, please don't block me on Twitter, Ishmael. It's nothing personal. Yeah. So, I mean, look, Waterford, they showed signs that they could they could do well. Yeah. But again, I think for Waterford, they, they've got Europe obviously as well. That I think a fourth place finish or maybe third is what they what same again I suppose. I think it might be beyond them a bit. It's just personally, I'm not like you know. I think you look at the players Pats have brought in. Like you look at them, the two teams. Who would you say is a stronger team? Probably Pats would, and then as your Pats won't have Europe, Waterford will. So I think yeah. on two fronts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I suppose if you take that into consideration, yeah, we we'll probably have a lot of Waterford fans screaming in there. Yeah. At, at the at YouTube right now, got the staff Bastian here. He's a big yeah. like, team of the year, Chief Duke. So I think there's does that Stanley Abar still there or is he gone? I think, I think he's still there. So he's um, a goal he scored well. a nice goal there. Yeah, didn't he's he's a goal so you imagine they're back to back at the back of the he's him and Max. Delaney. I think it'd be Max and um, oh, and then he yeah, I think he'll play Rory for so. yeah. They signed Kevin Lynch from Bray as well. He's yeah, obviously he's a good fullback too. Yeah. So. so they could do well, but I just think they might. Do you think they'll be in? I think them themselves, Pats and Cork will be fine for like third, fourth, and fifth. Will be yeah, yeah I'd have to, I'd have to agree like, with that. Um, I actually see Pats probably finishing above Waterford, which again, some people might disagree with. I see Pats finishing in fourth. Because, your opinion, no? Yeah, I suppose I am. They, they, I think they'll finish fourth because I think they're just that bit stronger than Waterford. But Waterford have re strengthened well, as I said, Kevin Lynch and Damien Delaney coming in. I mean, they're definitely up in their defensive line. They surprised everyone last season by finishing as high as they did well probably most people I'm sure some people probably thought they could do okay but I mean fourth place was an excellent finish and um, 
I don't think they'll be able to replicate it this season, but I think fourth, fifth, maybe sixth, hopefully not sixth, but I mean, fourth or fifth, I think that's probably reasonable. Beyond the, the, the realms. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think they'll, they'll finish fourth then, kind of taking into consideration the past time of Europe. Well, I think one you know, thing as well, like, you know, Akinadi is like, despite my grievances about him, like, he is a good player, but like, you know, we didn't really see him last season when he signed a new contract to stay with him. His form kind of dipped after it. Mm, he seems to be living in Doofus' shadow. Yeah, well, he's gone now, so I think they'll need, if they want it, like, kick off and like pressure the other teams, they'll need him to have a good season and score a few goals, like, you know. Yeah, because I think other than that, outside, I don't like. I don't like that guy's Aka Boozy as far as I know. He's a wide player, so I think they might be a bit thin on the ground in terms of the final third. So I don't need him to be in good form and stay injury free. Like so, if they yeah. want to be to have a good season. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, I think that's that's it. Then that's all the teams. That's been our season preview. Let's know your thoughts in the comments. Are you happy with the prediction? Yeah, we've given to your team. If not, let us know in the comments and let us know why. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like the video. Thank you very much for watching. We'll speak to you all soon.